Let's give a rousing welcome to Mr. Hank Williams. All right, boys, let it roll. Hey, good looking. Why do you love me? Most of the time, I do. Said, hey, sweet baby. Congratulations. You have a son, Mr. Williams. <laughs> He's going to have a real dad. Not like it was for me. He drinking like a fish tonight. Who are you writing, Hank? A little poem of Lord. Why don't you write me a poem? I might have to get to know you a little better. So when this project, <clears throat> how did this project, you know, kind of land in your lap, being that you are such a, a big fan of country music, where you're like, ah. Uh. Well, it, it, what happened is, it, it was about seven, eight years ago, somebody had brought to G, uh, G. Mark Roswell, one of the producers of the movie, had mentioned to him that somebody wanted to do a movie about Hank Williams, and it came to me to possibly produce the record. I mean, the movie, the record, the movie, <laughs> and. Um, and I thought about that, and I said, you know what? If, if somebody's going to make a movie about Hank Williams, it should be me. And as far as producing it, uh, I feel more like I should just, you know, I had I d directed one movie already, and I thought, you know what? I'm going to make, I'm going to just take it. And I didn't take it from them because they didn't really have the rights, and, and Hank's life rights didn't even need to be, um, he's a public figure. Oh, okay. So I just sat down and wrote a script. And that was how it all started. It started with the material that I wrote, and that's where people got excited. Wow. And then I, I, I have to say, I mean, I thought it was uncanny how much Tom Hiddleston looked like Hank Williams. Oh, amazing. Right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. when you first saw him for the first time, sort of in the whole deal, I mean, uh, were you just struck with... Well, I, I went to the screening of War Horse, I've told this story. So I'm sitting in War Horse, and I see Tom, and I thought Tom was very dynamic on camera. I really did. I, I, it, it, I was caught by his acting. But as I was watching it, I, I hit my wife like this, and I went, you know that guy, he, this is a premiere, I said, he really looks like Hank Williams. <laughs> so you, knew, you saw it right away? Right, immediately. Yeah. And Janie turned to me and goes, does everything have to come back to Hank Williams? Can't we just watch a movie? And But I was done. And at that point, I was determined to start finding out information. I didn't know who he was. I had never seen any other movies that he'd been in, but I started doing my research. And the more research I did, the more I realized what a good actor he was, and the more I realized what a good actor he was, the more intrigued I was. Plus, I always find it better. I thought, I mean, now he's known, but he's still not so known that, 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 he, that when you watch the movie, it takes you out of it. That's true. And, you, he, and he's brilliant in the movie, so he becomes Hank. Yeah. And I think that's why the movie, the, you know, a good force of the power. And yeah. Lizzie, of course. Yeah, she was great, too. Great. Well, I just wanted to, to finally ask about the whole um, tortured genius yeah. sort of aspect. I mean, it's, it's a theme that's sort of, you know, it, clearly it, it has affected a lot of musical and, and you know, artists that, in the world. What is it your thoughts about, you know, tapping into something that is kind of genius, but also having it be torture well, I, you in a I way? I think there's a lot of tortured people in the world, generally. Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of artists who are you know, somewhat um, neurotic. Some of them in, that I've worked with are psychotic. However, I don't think there's a lot of geniuses. But, and I don't think all geniuses are tortured. Right. But I do think that if you are given a gift of extraordinary talent, extraordinary talent, and you are unsure of where it comes from, and you're not able to be able to identify, you're not a, a, you're not Jung or, or Kierkegaard or Nietzsche or right. somebody like that. You're a, you're, a, you're a young, young person who comes out of the dirt of Alabama but somehow is able to s write this poetry and suddenly people are hearing it and interpreting it in really profound ways and you can't really make sense out of it, then that's confusing. Mm -hmm. And at the same time that it's confusing, it's also bringing you in a, a lot of the things that you want in life. But I think that dichotomy causes a lot of people to get imbalanced. So when you get imbalanced, there's only a few ways you can to balance yourself. You can really be a, a, very, you know, a very normal person who doesn't, or you can look for ways to sort of, when you're not doing what you're doing, to give yourself some peace. And that's why you end up with a lot of people kind of, you know, hitting a bottle or right. alcohol, but it, it, our society is filled with that. For pe anytime there's pressure or stress, but and then of course when you're an artist, you get a lot of 
um, license. And some of them do it that are not, I, I know a lot of a, uh, actors and I know a lot of musicians who are not geniuses, who are not even that tortured, who are messed up on drugs. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. this guy happened to be unique. Yeah. But you can be Bob Dylan, who's 72 years old, still creating genius stuff, lived an incredibly long life so far as an artist. It continues to be fruitful and not has done a lot of stuff, but survived and is strong. Yeah, Keith Richards too. If Keith you Richards, <laughs> by the way. I don't think he'd want to, to say that he's. Yeah, he's well, let like, me tell you something. I, I've met Keith on a couple occasions. One of the nicest people. Nothing like what you you expect oh, to sure. see. This really dissolute. Yeah, yeah. Just prone to smile and laugh. Lovely. That's great. Sweet guy. Good for good him. Good father, too. Well, this was very good. Congratulations. There's a lot of speculation about the hard lives that folk singers live. What do you mean, hard? Right. You go out on the road and you sleep with a different woman every night. Business is tough on marriage. Marriage is tough on marriage. You're barely even here. You're barely even a father now. Everybody has a little darkness in them. Now I'm talking about things like anger, sorrow, shame. I show it to them, and they don't have to take it home. <laughs>